Hello and welcome back to a quick comp guide. This is from PvE Gameplay, so the guide will be brief because the meta is undefined and changes are definitely going to be coming once the game releases on live servers. Regardless, I wanted to make some quick set 7 guides before live hits so you can climb as soon as possible once it's on the main branch. This video will show you how to succeed with Tristana Reroll. The core of this comp is Tristana and Jinx 3 star, nothing else really. Early game you want to play Hyme if you hit an early 2 star as well as Kench so that you can get Nomzi online for some frontline as long as the Kench which gives Revel for Jinx. If you get Lulu, Hyme and Triss you can start feeding up Nomzi a lot quicker which will be really good for late game when you eventually drop Heimerdinger and just have a 4 star Nomzi. However if you have a stronger board like I do in this specific example then you can play whatever frontline you hit and you don't necessarily have to follow the Kench and the Heimerdinger. Late game you are going to be keeping Lulu and Kench, then you can cap your board with 4 Cannoneer which usually involves throwing in a Senna and a Corky, ideally if you have a Cannoneer Augment then you don't necessarily need that Senna in, however Corky is always good because he also gives Revel to Jinx. If you don't have any units to play, a random Twitch is good because he lowers armor and if you don't have a Last Whisper this is really beneficial for Cannoneer, he also gives attack speed, however keep in mind the shortcoming of this comp is usually frontline, so if you lack frontline just play whatever you hit. Usually you're going to be running Kench early, so when you roll down at level 6 you can usually look for some bruises as your frontline, however in some games you might just run a Cavalier frontline, it's whatever you hit. However late game because you're playing Tristana and Lulu you always want to make sure that Nomzi is well fed so that you can play that as well. Usually cap your board by adding in more frontline once you can push levels after you've already hit your 3 star Tristana, you don't really get that much stronger by hitting any more backline units. Common bait that you'll probably see is running into a Sona, although she gives you Revel, you usually don't want to run Sona because you'd much rather just have more frontline as Tristana is going to be doing more than enough damage. You can throw in some backline units if they fit your board and you have enough frontline however. Best in slot for Tristana is having a damage item such as Deathblade or IE. I slightly prioritize Deathblade unless you have a specific augment which gives you AD in which IE is slightly better. Then you want an anti-tank item such as Last Whisper or Giant Slayer. Obviously Last Whisper synergizes really well with IE. And then finally your last item can be anything which is just giving her attack speed or AD such as Runa's Hurricane, Rage Blade or Rapid Fire Cannon. You can throw in some healing if you think you need it such as Hodge, Gunblade or BT. Prior would be on Hodge because she favours the extra damage, however Gunblade can be really good if you have a super tank at the front and she doesn't usually need the BT because the shield isn't that necessary. And finally, if you don't get any of those items then Titans or QSS are some pretty good defensive options. Just keep in mind that she doesn't usually need too many defensive options if you keep your positioning well, unless you're versing a pretty sin heavy lobby. Of course any leftover damage items can go on Jinx and another item that's really good in this comp is ZZ Rot for your frontline. This is just because this board usually lacks frontline in the early to mid game. Late game not so bad if you roll down for the correct units. And then other than that some generic frontline items are good such as Warmogs, Bramble or Declaw. Redemption is particularly good in this comp because you'll be feeding your Nomzi. So Nomzi has quite a lot of HP and redemption value is high because you always have at least 3 frontline. Some other items that are pretty good are Ziggs, this is because you can put it on your Lulu and make sure that it goes to both your Jinx and your Tristana. A Trap Claw can also be nice if you think you need it, but this is usually pretty lobby dependent. There's quite a few good augments that you can take, on the screen are some ones that are generally good for the comp, of course if it's good as a silver it's probably going to be good as a gold or prismatic, however except for the healing ones, the healing ones you only really need a silver at most. I would only ever force this comp if you get the your team counts as one extra cannoneer or if you get battle training. This is because battle training is really strong as you can play your early Tristana and then stack up a lot of AD by the time you 3 star it rather than having to swap out units. Cannoneer spat is fake as no one really benefits from it and that's why you would much rather just get the silver version and not play the golden version. You don't need healing or frontline augments as this comp is primarily based around your backline popping off, however a few items here and there won't hurt. Econ augments are generally good because you're slow rolling on 6 every single game and although you might not think it, the mana on kill makes Triss go infinite because she has a very short mana pool costing only 60. 
Early game, you want to be playing around Triss, Jinx, Heimerdinger, and Kench. You want to start feeding up Nomsi early and feed a Heimerdinger too, as well as a Lulu. This makes this process a lot quicker. However, do keep in mind that you can play any frontline. As you can see, if you don't hit a Kench like me, you can see in this example, I happen to hit the Cavalier frontline, which is fine. I'm still playing the Cannoneer backline. And notice how I'm not getting baited by the center because four Cannoneer here is fake, as I would much rather have more frontline. Most of the time you're going to be loose tricking, so make sure that your econ is good, and at worst, you're at least feeding up your nomsy. I'm going to go 6 on 3, 2, and if you've been open fought or econing hard, then you want to roll down until you're stable. This usually means finding at least Tristana 2 star, plus some frontline and sometimes Jinx 2 star. You can usually run Kench plus Bruiser, or in my example I hit some Cavaliers, so I'm running that for my frontline. If you're healthy, then you can actually afford to greed your econ a little bit and just slow roll on 50 gold. However, if you sacked early, then you don't want to be losing too much HP and you can actually spike quite a lot now if you roll. Remember that if win streaking, it's smart to roll down when you have a few pairs in order to keep the streak. Otherwise, you're just going to be slow rolling on 6, which means that you're not going to be going below 50 gold until you absolutely have to. You can dig below 50 gold if you're one off Tristana 3. Remember that 3 star Jinx isn't a huge spike unless itemized, which isn't going to be most of the case. You can look for Lulu 3, which actually happens more games than you'd think it. However, it is a bit of a luxury. Lulu 3 is a really good standalone unit, and this also means you'll be feeding up Nomzi a little bit quicker. However, don't sack your econ for Lulu 3 if you need to get your Tristana 3, as that is the most important unit in this comp. Also, keep in mind, hitting Jinx 3 isn't that important, and if you're miles away from it, then you can actually level up once you hit your Trist 3. Also, keep in mind, you can sometimes 3-star your frontline. For example, Shen is a bruiser who's also a 2-cost, so whilst you're rolling for Trist and Jinx, you can sometimes 3-star him. Other games, you might 3-star a 3-cost bruiser, or sometimes even a Cavalier. Again, the frontline is very flexible. However, just play what you hit, because sometimes you'll high roll, and you might as well take that free 3-star frontline. Late game, you want to level up as much as possible and cap your board out with Corky and good frontline. You're always playing around Kench, so you can often get a two-star bruiser such as Silas, Alawi, or Orn if you need to. Other routes are Guild, which is also quite good. I ran an early Sedge 2 here, so you can see that I've gone into a more Cavalier-focused board. And then I threw in the Twitch because Twitch offers attack speed, armor shred, and also increases the guild bonus. And then finally, Bard gives Mystic with Lulu, but also buffs up that guild. But this is definitely a luxury unit. You have more than enough damage, so make sure you're focusing on your frontline. You can see here that I have a Nunu 2-star, however, sometimes you might want to roll on 8 for a Hecarim 2-star, just so that you're stable. However, if you're high rolling, then of course you can eventually push 9. You don't get that much stronger rolling on 8, so you only do this if you desperately need to try and get a new frontline, or if you're trying to 3-star units. Often, you're never running center because value units are better, however, if you need that 4 Cannoneer, then of course you do so. Like I said before, you don't need more Revel, so I don't usually run Sona in this board. And that is the end of the video. Originally, I'd planned to say that, sorry, that it was short, but it actually ended up being a lot longer. I guess I went a little bit too much into the details. However, keep in mind, once this set is live, I will be doing more in-depth videos as I'll have a lot more time to unpack the meta and really figure out the ins and outs of the comp, as I clearly have not had enough time to play this comp, but I thought I had enough information to make a relatively short video for you. Good luck to everyone on PvE, I hope you guys are enjoying the new set, and for those waiting for it to come out online, you guys have one hell of a set waiting for you. I hope this was helpful to those who want to climb as soon as the set drops. That's it for me guys, thank you so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.